Blessed be. My name is Lady Amaris and welcome to the Circle of Hecker. So, the Witch's Temple. What is it? Where is it? What's the address? Where, how can I get there? Do I have to pay to get there? We'll find out. So, the Witch's Temple. The witch's temple is you. You are the temple of the witch. Now, if that temple is a little seedy, not working properly, then the life force, the magic, isn't going to flow as easily as it could. So we have a holistic approach to cleaning the temple. And this needs to be done at the beginning of when you're doing uh, any occult practice. So if you are a witch or a druid or just a, a magician, an occultist of any kind, you need to start to, to clean house. Think of it as if uh, you have a plate and you're cooking a wonderful meal. And the plate um, isn't clean, it's dirty. But you put this wonderful meal on the plate and then eat the meal. So what happens when you eat off a dirty plate? You get sick. Your magic isn't as wondrous as it could be. So it's an ongoing process. We're stripping back the layers, almost like an onion. There's one layer, next layer, and a next layer. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not you watch this video and go, okay, she said to do this, this, and this. I've ticked those boxes, right, ready, go. What's next one? It's not that simple. It's an ongoing process. It's years after years after years. But you have to begin, you have to start it. And the best time to do it is at the beginning of when you're starting an occult practice. Because when you, when you go into sacred places, and that, by that I mean in constructing a magic circle or even going into holy places if you go on holiday and you decide that you want to go to um, a, a holy place. When you're going into those places, if you are toxic, if you are unclean, then you will go crazy. I have met many people in my life who have been in a magical setting and because they haven't done that work at, to begin with, they have started to get a little bit this magic circle you would see as a magnifying glass. So if you have things that are in the closet, those dark skeletons that you don't want to talk about and you don't want to think about, then they are going to be magnified and come out when you least expect it or you want to or when you are prepared to deal with that. Uh, Yoda, I think, said, you must unlearn what you have learnt. So it is peeling back the layers, getting rid of the things that don't serve you, the things that aren't helping you in your, in your quest to be the best person, the best witch you can possibly be. Now, as I said, it's a holistic process. It's a holistic process of mind, body and spirit. We're going to start with the mind. It's all things start with a thought. And uh, so we'll just do it in a basic way of conscious and subconscious. So conscious meaning you and me right now, okay? You are, you are conscious of watching me in the video. You are conscious of what's happening around you. Uh, you are focused. So we'll call that conscious. Subconscious is below conscious, okay? So it's not, um, it's not lesser than conscious but it is below your conscious understanding, or, or, or your conscious perception. Now this, the subconscious, is working all the time. And your subconscious part of your mind works on things like your breathing, uh, your circulation, your heart pumping, uh, digestion, all those things that you don't have to consciously think about. The only thing that uh, has a dual purpose or dual conscious unconscious is your breathing. You can consciously think about your breathing and control your breathing, or it can switch to the unconscious part of your mind where it's an unconscious thing, you're not thinking about breathing. So that it part is a, is a dual connection, and we'll talk about that as we, as we go. So the unconscious versus the conscious. 
the unconscious mind takes into itself around about 40,000 bits of information a second, while your conscious mind processes about 40 bits of information a second. Now you can see the difference between your subconscious and your conscious. Your conscious mind is the filter. You filter out what you think you need and what you don't need. Your subconscious mind is the sponge. It's taking everything in. It's, no, there's no filter, there's no screen. Everything comes in. And it's processing that, but it's processing that in the background. Now, when you think about that, when you think about your subconscious mind bringing in all that information and you only being conscious of about 40 bits of that information a second, how much information gets past the radar? How much information is in your brain, in your mind, and then is influencing what you do, what you say, how you think, how you feel? So when we think about the subconscious mind, and the 40,000 bits of information that go into that subconscious mind and the 40 that are actually processed and conscious. Think about the television. Television has a frame rate that is designed to put you into an altered state of consciousness. So you know that if you're interested in occult teachings and occult philosophies and occult methods, you would know that we try and strive to be in an altered state of consciousness so that we can then alter our consciousness and elevate. If you are watching television in an altered state of consciousness, you are programming your mind, your subconscious mind, with images. Now we need to think, do we want to program our mind with images that we want, consciously want, or are we going to program our mind with images that someone else wants? Someone else wants us to buy something. Someone else wants to feel and do something. Someone else wants us to believe something. So all of that information is going to be programmed into the television and that subliminal information is going to go in, subliminal being below the liminal, below the conscious perception. And all of that is going to be processed and then when you come to a decision, you're going to come to a decision because of the information that you have been provided. Hence, subconscious information that you have been provided from the television. So if I can say anything at all, please don't watch the television. And if you do, be mindful of what you're watching. It is only used to distract you. And if you want to be on the path of the witch, Distractions are not something that you need. Be mindful of your thoughts. What are your thoughts? And what are someone else's thoughts? Those need to be examined. Also, one exercise is just to be mindful of how many thoughts you have a day and whether they are good, positive thoughts or whether they are not. So a little exercise would be when you have a thought, you say, I either reject that or I accept that. So if it's a thought of I'm fat and ugly, then it would be I reject that thought. Or if it is a thought of I'm beautiful and wonderful, then I accept that thought. And if you continually do this, you will begin to be mindful of those ones and how many thoughts a day are positive and how many of them are negative. And then you can start to train yourself to be more positive in your thoughts. Because what happens on the inner is reflected on the outer. And if you are a negative person, who thinks about negative thoughts about themselves and others, then that is going to be reflected on the outer and it is going to affect the energy field around you and around others. Another more practical way of doing this is to clean your house. And they say a clean house is a clean mind or a tidy house is a tidy mind in a, a feng shui um, idea. 
is that energy flows around your house. And if you have pockets within your house that are energy stoppers that hinder the flow of energy, then that energy is not going to flow in a, in a conducive way and you're going to have areas that are stagnated. You think about that same thing within your mind, within your body. If you have junk within your mind that is hindering a thought, hindering the thought process, or you try and concentrate and then there's Kim Kardashian, uh, Justin Bieber, all of those things start to flash up into your mind. Oh, I'm not worthy. Why should I be doing this? Because I'm not good enough. All of those different uh, ideas that start to come into your mind when you start to try and do this process and, and focus and think about something all, um, all comes from a cluttered mind. So you start on a mundane level cleaning your house, making sure that is clean. And if you think about it also in a different magical sense, is that many Vidouan um, hoodoo traditions have things where they would put um, dust or, or some kind of um, salt or, or uh, powder onto the floor as a hex or as a charm. So if your floor is clean, then you are freeing up that area. If you make sure that your window sills are clean, you're freeing up that area of, of stagnated energy. Um, so energy be seems to stagnate along the floor, on window sills, uh, all of those, those areas. So if you start cleaning up, start getting rid of stuff in your life, in your house that you don't need. When you start getting rid of those bits and pieces, then you can start filling it with other things. But if you start a magical process and you have nowhere for any of that part of your life to fit in, then it's not going to fit in. So you need to take away before you can add. Also ground. And by grounding, I mean taking off your shoes, going out into the, into the garden, or if you're not able to, to go into the garden, try and find a park somewhere where you can, or, or the beach, the beach is wonderful, where you can just take off your shoes, put your feet in the soil, in the sand, and just ground your energy. Because when you are all over the place, and like, oh, so much stuff, so much stuff, so much stuff, you need to ground. You need to make sure that you can centre yourself and ground. Start to ground yourself by going into nature and meditating. And you can begin to focus on your breath and then focus on your thoughts and just letting them flutter out and focus on having less and less thoughts. It's a really hard thing to say, just focus on nothing. Because the minute someone says, just clear your mind, focus on nothing, Everything that you've ever thought about in your life suddenly rushes into your head. So think about one thing. Focus on one thing. And again, if you've gotten to this part of the video and you're still here, then I applaud you. Because YouTube has given information that people do not have attention spans. Their attention span goes for at the very most five minutes. Two to three minutes for most videos is the average attention span of a YouTube viewer. So if you've made it this far, good on you. And it shows that you have what it takes to be a witch, to be a magician, to be an occultist. You need to have an attention span. If you're over here, over here, oh, 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 look. If you're all, all over the place, oh look rabbit, then you're not going to get anywhere. It's a slow process. It doesn't happen overnight. But training your brain, training your mind is the first and the most important part of any magical training. Everything else is just peripherals. You train your brain, train your mind, and the rest will follow.